Now that we can hear ourselves. Go ahead. Huh? You want to do another one or do the same one? Tell you what, I saw smoke coming off those keys over there, didn't you? Oh, wasn't that wonderful? That was great. All right, let's all stand together and sing a little bit. How about it? Everybody get enough to eat tonight? Nobody got left out? You got a double portion tonight? <laughs> All right, we're going to sing this old song. I think you know it. How many of you have victory in Jesus? I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me And I heard about His calling of his precious blood atoning and then I repented of my sin and won the victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever well he sought me and he bought me with his
Well, I heard about his healing of his cleansing power, revealing how he made the lame all to walk again, and he caused blind eyes to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. He has built for me in glory And I heard about the streets of gold Just beyond that crystal sea again. Listen, if you love Jesus, I just want you to shout praise the Lord as loud as you can. I heard about about a mansion he's built for me somewhere in glory and I heard about the streets of gold just beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior. Sing it out. He saw me. He saw me. Can you lift your hands and sing? Oh, it's going to be good when we get home. When we come to the realization it's not about you, it's not about what you do, it's about who he is and about what he did for me and what he did for you. And I'll tell you something, everything that we do, we will do selfless for the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything we do. You know, there's a lot of times I preach and nobody says good job. That's right. A lot of times I preach, nobody says thank you for that sermon. There's a lot of times we sing and nobody claps. Newsflash, I'm not doing it for you. I'm not doing it for people. I'm doing it for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And when I get to heaven, it, it's not going to matter what anybody thought about me. But I want to hear those words. Enter in, my good and faithful servant. And praise the Lord, I can't wait to see my Savior. Isn't it good to be at the Carolina Mountain Youth Retreat? 
Man, I tell you what, breaking the chains this weekend. And you know what? Not only breaking chains for young people, breaking chains for middle-aged people, breaking chains for older people. Chains have got to be broken. And you know what? Some chains are invisible. Chains that you can't see. And I'm thankful for a God. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost in here tonight. I feel the power of the Spirit of God. He's got the power to break chains. He's got the power to throw those chains away. He's got the power to deliver you from a place like that Gadarian was when he was possessed with legion, many devils. You know, that man that was possessed with all those devils, legion was not the man's name. Legion was that which was living inside of him's name. And you know, they tried to chain him and with physical chains and he'd break loose. Would cut himself. He lived among the tombs. He, see, tombs represent memories. I've often tried to put myself in that man's shoes and wonder what kind of memories was he living with? What caused him to get to that state? I don't know why I'm preaching this little sermonette right now. What caused him to be possessed by a legion of demons? Was it the death of a loved one that caused him to go down the wrong road? Why was he abiding in a place of memories, in a place of death? But I'll tell you this. Jesus, when Jesus came, he broke a chain. <laughs> he broke a chain of a legion demons that was chained to that man. Nobody could see those chains. Brother Patrick, no one could see that which was inside him, but all the people thought he's acting like he's acting. He's a crazy man. But you know what? It was worse off to the people after he was delivered, after those invisible chains were broken. After the demons were cast out and went into the swine. You ate some of that tonight, by the way. <laughs> After that. I want you to think about this. That, that same man, the Bible says, was now clothed and in his right mind. But because he was clothed, because he was in his right mind, they asked him to leave. They had gotten used to living with invisible chains. God's anointed this service for tonight. I'm going to tell you that. Listen, some people's fought all night long and fought all evening long just to be able to get here. And some people didn't make it because of chains. Adult, I'm talking to you just as much as I am talking to any young person. You better get rid of those invisible chains, those selfish chains. You better get rid of those pride chains that's down inside. They might not see it on the outside, but you got them. Holding resentment and jealousy. You can't live that way. I can't live that way. I refuse to live that way, matter of fact. And God will deliver you tonight. I tell you what, that's preaching right there. He's a delivering God. Some people will hold things within them for months, years. And all it is, it's like an invisible chain of cancer that's been planted by the hand of Satan in your life, in your mind, in your spirit. But just as Jesus stepped on that bank outside of the Sea of Galilee, 
and delivered that man that was possessed by a legion of devils is the same Jesus that showed up right here at First Free Will Baptist Church on May 26, 2018 and says, I'm still the same God that stood on that shore of Galilee and commanded those demons to go into those swine I'm the same God that hung between the heavens and the earth for you that you might be set free and not live with any animosity. That you didn't have to live with any kind of foul spirit. That you didn't have to live with any kind of regret. I'm telling you, I feel the all of glory right now. That you don't have to live in yesteryear. You can start a new life today. If you're unsaved, you ought to be saved right now because Jesus is calling you. If you've got something hindering your walk with the Lord, He wants to deliver you. Don't wait till the end. Enjoy the service tonight. I'm, getting, I'm trying not to preach what I've, God's laid on my heart for tomorrow. You don't have to live in condemnation oh let's preface that self condemnation anybody anybody looking look in the mirror lately anybody done that that's your biggest enemy outside of Satan self matter of fact my great grandfather matter of fact one of his sons is here tonight who pastored the church here, my great-grandfather said this. When thinking about ourself, he said the devil gets credit for a lot of things that the devil had nothing to do with. It was our flesh that were bad. And you know what? I'm, I stand... I'm, I'm, I'm a pastor of this church. We started this youth retreat, what was it, Lucas? 17 years ago? 17, 18 years ago, we've been doing this. But I honestly feel that God wants to do more tonight than He has done in 18 years. But see, Jesus is a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on you. He's not going to make you come to this altar. Matter of fact, the only chain that he has is a chain of grace. And he won't drag you with it. (laughs) He'll lay it on on your neck and say, if you want to come, I got some good gifts for you. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray right now. I I feel led to pray. And I want to tell you something. I will not let anything hinder the work of the Lord. In this meeting, in my life, I refuse to bow to the things of the world. There's some people here tonight that need help. Like I said, it's not limited to young people. The help that you need is here. The helper is here. And all you've got to do is say, Jesus, I need you. He'll come to you. He'll love you. He'll loose you. He'll label you. He'll lift you. That's what he'll do for you. But you've got to be willing to say, Lord, here I am. Man, sir, ma'am, don't you sit back tonight and say, this is a youth meeting when God's firing firing arrows over the balcony of glory and hitting your heart. Don't you do it. Wrong is wrong and right is right. We all mess up. It's just a good night to get it right. Let's pray. Kind Jesus. 
Lord, you are rich in mercy. You are rich in grace. God, you've been so good to all of us. And Lord, you've enabled us to be here tonight one more time. God, you, you, you're drawing people right now. And God, we, we lay aside our labor. We lay aside, Lord, our selfishness. We lay aside our, our attitudes. We lay aside those things that come between us and you. And God, we pray that you take it away. We pray, Jesus, that you would give us the strength to crucify ourselves. And God, that we would, we would accept what you want to give here tonight. God, I pray right now, Lord, that you just flood this place with your peace. Lord, for those that need it, for those, Lord Jesus, that need joy, God, I pray that you pour in joy. God, for those, Lord, that are unsaved, I pray that you pour salvation in this place tonight. God, we're all battling. We're all in a fight. We're all on a battleground. God, help us to suit up tonight. Lord, that good things may happen. God, we praise you, Jesus. Lord, you've blessed this meeting so far. And God, today, I just feel an urgency that there are people that are, that are really needing help tonight. God, I pray. Lord, I pray you perform, Lord, a great miracle. Lord, just perform a work of grace right now in the hearts and in the souls of the people that are here, God, those that have labored and, Lord, those, Lord Jesus, that are listening online that need help, God, move upon them. Oh, God, please, Jesus, move tonight. God, you're such a great God. Oh, Father, we pray. Today, oh Jesus, I faced a mountain. God, I pray, move right once now. again. It seems so tall. Oh Jesus, I tried to climb, but it seemed I'd surely fall. Please, God, meet the needs of the people that have me. So I knelt. God I called on Jesus. Oh. Just as always, I felt his presence. And his hand of mercy, it lifted me just in time. I want to thank him. I want to praise him. His grace. His grace. Given victory one more time. He was always standing by my side when the valley was low, when the river. Bring deliverance tonight, Lord. Bring deliverance. Looking back yes. upon this journey since the day I first met him many times his love and mercy has rescued me once again I come before him and one more time I'll stand and praise Him yes. for all His blessings. Yes, He has been so good to me.
Once again, it seems so tall. I tried to yeah, climb, but it seemed I'd Praise surely Lord. fall. Yes. <laughs> and so, why don't you praise your way out of trouble tonight? Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> and just as always, I yes. heaven's listening to you. Hand of mercy. All of heaven's listening to you. Just help them sing it. Lift your hands up. And help them. Oh, I want to thank you. I want to praise you. His grace has yes. been And like before, He's given victory one more time. He was always standing by. So I want to thank you. I want to praise him one more time. Now looking back upon this journey. Since the day that I first met him. Many times his love and mercy has rescued me. Once again, I come before Him, and one more time, I'll stand and praise Him for all His blessings. Yes, He has been so good to me. Has God been good to any of you here tonight? Oh, I want to thank Him. Yeah, praise Him. You can't praise Him enough. praise Him. His grace has He's given victory one more, one more time. He was always standing by my side. When the valley was low, when the river was wide. So I want to thank Him. I want to praise Him one more time. He was always standing. By my side When the valley was low When the river was wide So I want to thank Him And I want to praise Him One more time Is it okay if we follow the Holy Spirit tonight? But it wouldn't matter if you said yes or no I'm telling you that we going to, Jessica, come on, sing right now, honey. Come on. Praise be unto the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This is Jacob's wife, Jacob Berry's wife, in case you don't know it. And uh, listen, newsflash. The Holy Ghost is here. Hey. He may be everywhere, because he is. He's omnipresent. But he's not welcomed everywhere. But I prayed a threefold prayer in that prayer room. We welcome you, Father. We welcome you, Jesus. And we welcome you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> He's here.
strife we're free and no one kind word will wound the heart are spoken oh this is just what heaven means to me Jacob was preaching last night. Oh, Lord Jesus. When Jacob was preaching last night, I felt a burning in my heart to tell you, young folks, that you're worthy. Can I tell you you're worthy? Jesus Christ loves you. Jesus Christ loves you. Hang on. Hmm. 
Jesus Christ loves you. Jesus Christ loves you. I have to tell each and every section because when I tell you, I'm not just telling one person in this section. I'm telling all of you. And I'm telling all of you and you and this section over here that Jesus Christ loves you. You see, I was once your age. You young folks, I was once your age. And I fell away from Christ. I was raised in church. My family had a music ministry. And I knew God's word. But yet, I fell. Not one of us are exempt from Satan's attacks. Not one. Satan will come at you when you think that you've got it all together. I'm telling you, we don't have it all together. When you start thinking you have it all together, watch out. Because Satan will rear his ugly head up and find a way where he could sneak through the cracks. See, I started following the wrong crowd. Now, let me tell you something. It wasn't at school because I was homeschooled. It was at my church. Sometimes Satan will use friends within the church that are not serving the Lord. And just because they're a church friend and just because you see them three times a week at church doesn't always mean that they're serving Christ. Okay? So I started following the wrong crowd. And my sin got deeper and deeper. And I started hanging on to those chains of lies. And those lies became a spiraling effect that only got worse and worse. But the Bible says that your sins will find you out. My sins found me out. And when they found me out, man, I tell you, it was heavy. The sin that I was under was heavy. So like Pastor was saying, I wasn't the one that was cutting myself. Guess what? I quit eating because my sin was heavy. And I thought, because of this sin and everything that I had going on, that was something I could control. So I quit eating. I became very sick, borderline anorexic. I had bones that were sticking out because I, I had lost a lot of weight. And I thought to myself, I'm not worthy enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'll never be good enough. No one will ever love me. No one will ever love me. How could I keep going on? So then I started having suicidal thoughts. And Satan wanted to take me further and further and further down. So one night, I had to go to the bathroom. But because of the weight of my sin, I literally could not walk to the bathroom. I had no strength whatsoever. So I got on the floor and I crawled all the way to the bathroom. And while I was sitting there on the floor, I opened my eyes and I could literally see where I had hit rock bottom. It was dark. I saw the rocks all around me. And I felt so alone. And I'll tell you something. When Satan wants to attack you, he will separate you from God's word, from your church folk, from your youth group. He will pull you away from everyone. Because the Bible says that he's come to steal, kill, and destroy. He steals you away from those he loves who you love, who love you, then he will kill your spirit spiritually. He will kill it so you have no more God within you. And then he will want to destroy you physically. I was at the point of near destruction. I was sitting on that floor all alone, wanting to take my life. And then this hand, this glorious hand reached down and he just touched my shoulder. And he said, guess what? I still love you. 
I still say you are worthy. I still say you are enough. And the forgiveness came like a flood. Oh, it's so wonderful when he says, I love you. And guess what? Not only do I love you, but you're forgiven. No more do I have to hold on to those sins. No more do I have that weight because I could feel lifted because of Christ. God is faithful. And I just want to say to you, you, if you give your life to Christ, if you ask him on bended knees, Lord, I can't do this anymore. Would you forgive me? He will tell you you're worthy. He will tell you he loves you. And then guess what? He will tell you, you are forgiven. No more do you have to carry that weight of sin because you are forgiven. Oh, he's faithful. He's faithful.
There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well Jesus has over The grave is over Everybody stand, help sing. Come the on. victory on, is won. He is risen from the dead, and I will rise when he calls my name. No The shadows disappear, and my faith shall be my eyes. Jesus has overcome, and the grave is overwhelmed. The victory.
Amen. I know some still praying. I know we got some groups that's going to sing, and, and, and you're going to sing tonight. And, and I know that, hey, we're just trying to follow the Lord, but now, right now is the time for the preacher to come preach. I believe that. And uh, so, uh, hey, you come on, Wesley. God's here. Uh, you yeah, all pray. You keep praying. Do you, you get through? Hey, there's victory in the camp. Amen. Praise God. While these are still praying, we're not going to... Hallelujah. I'm not going to be long tonight. I just feel like this is the word that needs to be said. I believe we've had a move of God in this place already tonight. We can leave here and say it's been good. Folks have been changed. Lives have been changed on this altar tonight. And I believe that there's still people in this room that's unsure. I believe there's people in this room that's still playing games that's still making this thing out to be just a game, that everything is okay, that if you can escape this weekend, everything will be all right. I I was not planning on preaching this initially. This is what I feel God wants, and I want to give it to you the way he gave it to me, and I'll get out of the way as quick as I can. I want you to take your Bibles to Luke 13, because I want you to see this. Luke chapter number 13, and while you're turning there, let me say this. In Luke chapter number 12, Jesus is speaking, and he begins to speak about our identity in Christ, who we are. He begins to speak about what he wants us to have. And he begins to speak about seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He begins to go on and compare us and our identity to the ravens, to the lilies and all the things and talking about how much he loves us. He goes on from that and he begins to talk about our preparation, how how we must be prepared for we know not when the Son of Man may come. We know not the hour or the day day or the time that the Son of Man may come and take us all out of this world. Do you understand? I know it's cliche and I know people say it all the time, but do you understand that before we leave this place tonight, Jesus Christ could come back and claim his children. And I believe this tonight. I believe there's great people in this room. I believe there's great young people in this room. But I believe that if Christ came back right now, I believe there'd be some young people left sitting in this room. I believe there may be some adults sitting in this room because we have played the game of church for so long. We've got used to religion. We've got used to tradition. We've got used to all those things and we believe that because of that that we are right with God because mom and dad have said it because we've came to a youth retreat because we've been here all weekend because we've done good things that we believe that we're right with God but Jesus in Luke 12 and 13 is trying to get us to take an inward look to examine our own lives, to make sure that I know, that I know, that I know that I'm right with God. Can I ask you this tonight? Hey, people may around you may say something about, but do you know tonight that you know, 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 that that if you died tonight, that you would be in heaven with Jesus? The scripture says this, Real quickly tonight, verse number six, stand to your feet if you would for just a second.
Now Jesus leaves that place, his preparation, and talking about our identity and who we are in Christ and what he wants us. And then he goes into Luke chapter 13. And around verse number six, Jesus is speaking of salvation and talking about except we repent, that we have to be right. Verse number six, the Bible said he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Notice the next phrase. Cut it down. Get rid of it. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? Now watch what it says. And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well... And if not then, after that, thou shalt cut it down. You can be seated tonight. If you want a title, I'll give you a title real quick. I want to title this message, This May Be Your Year. This may be the year that God does something in this meeting that changes your life. I began to study the parable of the fig, fig tree. And if you notice about Jesus' ministry, Jesus talks about the fig tree many times. But here in this parable, he begins to talk about this particular fig tree that evidently looks really well. It looks great. I, I mean, because the owner of the field is going to go out and inspect it. So from a distance, everything on that tree was to look good. It probably had great leaves. It was probably big. I mean, it was, it was flourishing, it seemed like, from a distance. But as I began to study this tree, what I noticed is from a distance, it looks pretty. From a distance, it looks okay. From a distance, everything is fine. But when this owner came up to inspect it for the fruit that's supposed to be on it, he found that the tree was not bearing any fruit. So what we find in Luke is that this tree, tree is practically useless. It's good to look at. It's good to talk about, but it's not doing what God has designed the tree to do. Do you understand this tonight? That God has designed you to bear fruit for the kingdom of God so that others may see Jesus in your life, so that others don't have to guess and wonder if you're saved and if you're right with God. You should bear enough fruit that people know when they see you that you are right with God. But here's the problem today. Here's what I found. If you're a note taker, jot this down. I'll give it to you real quick. Number one, we notice the wasting of life. How this tree was wasting its life away. This tree had been planted. It had time. It has been in that vineyard for three years. Every year the owner goes and there's no fruit thereon. This third year, I can imagine this owner from a distance, preacher Jacob, him looking down and say, well, that tree looks a little bit better this year. Everything, it's greener. It's a little bit fuller. I'll go check it. There's got to be some fruit on it. There's got to be some good stuff. And as that, that owner gets up and he begins to look inside the tree, he finds out uh, that this tree is just faking it. <laughs> It's this tree. Hey, this tree right here and these other trees they got in here. You know what's good about this stuff? Look, this is some pretty stuff right here. It makes the church look pretty. That tree up there makes the church look nice. These bushes, all these flowers, all this stuff makes the church look nice. But do you know the truth about it? Every bit of this stuff is fake. Ain't none of it real. You can't take it out there and plant it. It ain't going to do nothing. It's fake. I mean, it's just there to look at. See, listen to me. I'm afraid tonight that a lot of our young people are content being good and, and just being fake. It's good to look at. Everything on the outside looks okay. You've got a shirt and towel. You're carrying your Bible. You know how to raise your hands. You know how to say amen. But the truth of the matter is you've got some folks fooled and you're faking your way through it. Listen to me, young person. You can know all the songs. You can know all the scriptures. You can stand up and quote them. 
you can stand up and sing them. You can stand up amongst all the adults and raise your hands. And all the adults say, well, look at there. That's a good godly kid. But behind closed doors, you're doing things you ain't supposed to be doing. Behind closed doors, you're living a fake life. Behind closed doors. You can stand up here and profess Christ all day long. But the truth of the matter is, is that a real profession? Do you know that you've been right with God? Do you know that you are saved? Or are you living a life contrary to what you're trying to get people to believe? Do you know what this tree offers you and I? This one right here tonight. Do you know what it offers you and me? Absolutely, positively, nothing. See, I'm afraid tonight that because our religion, because mom and daddy told us we got right, because mom and daddy said we're saved, because of tradition. I go to church every Sunday. I go to church on Wednesday. I say my prayers. I do all these things. Religion and tradition will send you to a real devil's hell. Listen to me. It will send you to a devil's hell. But when you know that you've been planted by the master, when you know, hey, I may not have a lot, honey, but I'm real in what I say. See, that's what we're longing for. We're looking for a generation today that's not going to be fake. We're looking for a generation that when they stand up and raise their hand that you know something's going on. We're looking for a generation that's tired of just people looking at them and they're wanting to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. We're looking for a generation that says I want to do something for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be real. I want to be authentic. I want to be genuine. I want people to know that I know in whom I have believed. I want people to know that I'm the real deal. You can stand up and testify in your youth group and then go out and commit fornication in your relationships the next day and somehow feel fine about it. You know why? Because we're no more than fake. Fake looks good sometimes, don't it? It's pretty. Huh? Don't take much maintenance. I ain't got to do much to maintain what I look like. I ain't got to read much. I ain't got to pray much. I ain't got to go to youth group much. I ain't got to go to church much. I am what I am. I'm fake. It don't take much to maintain the look. Understand me. You say, preacher, why are you preaching on this? Because I grew up in church. I grew up in a free will Baptist church. I went to a Christian school. And if you don't believe me, my principal in my senior year high school is right there. He'll tell you, I was fake as fake can be. I could go to church and sing the songs with the best of them. I could stand up and quote scripture with all them kids. I could memorize at all but the truth of the matter is is if I would have died in that condition I would have went to hell understand me mama and daddy can't save you all the stuff you know cannot save you your church cannot save you but when you enter into a relationship with the king of kings and the lord of lords that you can stand up and say I know that I'm right with God we find the fakeness of the tree and then we find the failure of the tree. You know what this tree was failing to do? It was failing to be a tree. It was failing to produce fruit. God designed that tree to produce fruit to the f so that it could fill others, so that it could do things for others, so that it, it could pour into others, so that life could be given to other people. But it's not bearing any fruit. So I wonder tonight if we begin to look deeply into your life. Listen to me, young people. This is for you. I'll get the adults in a minute. But I wonder if we begin to look deeply into your life, into the hidden parts of your life, into everything that you do behind closed doors, into your relationships when nobody's looking around, into all your social media, into everything you do. I wonder if you're bearing fruit in every aspect of your life. I wonder if you're trying to produce fruit for the Lord Jesus Christ or you just 
just existing? Are you just blowing in the wind? Are you just there to go along with the right? I want the Lord to inspect me. And when he does, I want him to find me doing what he has ordained me and called me and saved me to do. I want to be found faithful. I want to be found worthy. I want to be found right in the eyes of God. I'm tired of faking it. I'm tired of not feeling it. I want to do something that I feel the power and the presence of the Lord. Listen to me, young people. When you get a desire to feel God, when you get a desire to have God move on you and you get tired of being fake, you'll feel something you ain't never felt in your life. But many of us are wasting our life away on being fake. Listen, i got to go to point number two because I'm going to hurry, I promise. Number two, we find the wasting of life. But number two, we find the working of love. Pay attention to me right here. Now the owner of the field comes out and he looks. Now he's, he's the man, you know. And he looks out on the tree and he begins to look it up and down. And he says, you know what? I've come looking for fruit three years. Three years I've come looking for fruit. It, 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 this is wasting the ground. Cut it down. Get rid of it. Cut it down. Just That is a picture. Listen to me. That is a picture of how God the Father should speak about me and about you. That we're just sinners. We were at enmity with God. We, 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 we had sin in our life that was separating us from us. But the Bible said this now. The Bible said that the dresser of the field, the dresser, he's different than the owner. He's the worker. He's the one that's getting dirty. He's the one doing the work. He comes up and says, no, no, hold on. Hold on now. Hold on. I know this don't look like much of a tree. I know you want to cut it down, but don't do it yet. I see something in this tree. I don't want you to cut it down. Let me work on it for just a little while. Can I say this to you? Can I say this to you tonight? Every one of us should be in a devil's hell. We should be about to be cast in. But thank me to God for the day Jesus stepped in and said, No, not yet. Not yet, Daddy. Not yet. I know you need to kill him. I know they need to be cut down I know they're fake but don't kill them yet I see something in this tree I want to say good God almighty I'm thankful that Jesus Christ saw something in me that nobody else did when I was fake when I wasn't living right when I was just saying it I'm glad for a God that stepped in and protected me He had patience with that tree. Do you understand tonight? Listen to me. Patrick O'Dell, by your own testimony this morning, you should have been cast into hell. You shouldn't have never made it out. You should have put dope in your body and God killed you. You wasn't bearing no fruit. You said you said you were saved, but you wasn't really, you were fake as fake could be. God should have cut you down and got rid of you. But aren't you glad for that one day that Jesus said, not yet, daddy. I ain't done with him yet, daddy. I've got something planned for him, daddy. He's not done yet. I want to tell you tonight, young person, I know you may have messed up. I know that you may have done wrong. And I know that God may want to deal with you, but we've got a Jesus that's rich in mercy, that's great in grace, that's standing in front of you. I'm glad, thank God, I say hallelujah, glory to the Lamb of God, that Jesus is standing guard. He's guarding you. This may be the night that God gets you. This may be the night that you can get things right. This may be the night that you're tired of being fake, that you're Hallelujah. Glory. That you're tired of messing around. That you're tired of playing games. This may be the night that you say enough's enough. I've got to get right. I say bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. If you, hey, hey, you ain't got to wait on me to finish. If you've been fake long enough, Jesus is giving you a chance. God is giving you a chance to get right. You ain't got to wait on invitation. Don't cut it down, Daddy. Play for me, Luke. I'm... I can see. 
I can see the dresser of the field as he comes in. And he says, no, 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 no. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I know it don't look like much. But I see something in this tree. Don't cut it down yet. Give me one more year to work it. Now watch, pay attention to me. He says this. He said, let me dig about it. Do you know where Jesus begins to work on you? Jesus did not come and get in the top of that tree and start working from the top. Jesus, he got down in the mess. And he began to work on the root of the problem. He said, let me dig about it. When he's digging it, you know what he's doing? He's turning over new dirt. He's taking the old out and turning over some new dirt. He's getting you right where he wants you. He's working on the inside. See that feeling you feel in your heart right now? That's the Holy Ghost of God getting down to where you are. He's getting down to your mess. He's getting down in your hurt. He's getting down in your regret. He's getting down in your shame. He's getting down in your sin. I know you may have been hurt. I know you may have done wrong. But there's a God getting down in your mess tonight. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that he got down to where I'm living. Where he got down, he can work on me. I want to tell you tonight that God is getting down there with you. Down in the stuff nobody knows. Down in the sin. Down in the regret. Down in your junk. God is getting down in there with you. And the Bible says that, he said, let me dig it. And let me dung it. Dung is just a bunch of mess. Ain't nobody want to be around. Jesus said, I'll, I'll get messy. The Bible said he became sin who knew no sin that we might become the righteousness of God. But let me tell you this and then I'm going to close. I'm done. The third point is very important. We've got the working of love but the third point is the warning of the Lord. He said, I'm coming back. The owner of the field said, I'll be back to check this thing out again. Understand, you can make a little decision all you want. And listen, we're not out for you to make decisions this week. We're out for you to make commitments this weekend. See, a decision, a come and go, just like these leaves. It ain't nothing. We want you to make a commitment to God. We want you to get rooted, deep down rooted with God. Hey, we were dug down deep with God. We ain't wanting you just to make a decision tonight. To commit with God. Because listen to me. Listen to me. He's coming back. And what will you do if tonight's the night that he decides to come back. And he looks you over and says, nope, cut it down. You know what they do with the trees that they cut down? They throw them in the fire. And they burn them. So that they can never, ever be planted again. What will you do tonight if God inspects your life and says, Nope, you've played a good part. You've looked really good on the outside. You know all the scriptures. But it ain't right. Cut it down. See, listen to me. I don't want you to lose this tonight. I don't want you to think just because you're here. And just because you came with your church and listen to me adult just because you're here that does not tell you that you're saved I can stand here tonight and tell you that as a young man Jesus Christ broke my heart he infiltrated my life and changed me from the inside out I had a young man talking to my brother my brother's a pastor and he came into my brother the other day and I pulled up and he knew me back when I was just a fake. When I'd claim Jesus and live another life, he knew me then. And he looked at my brother and he said, I want to ask you something. He said, yeah. 
He said, is Wesley really changed? Is, 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 he, is he really changed? And my brother looked at him. He said, you wouldn't believe. Because something got inside of me. Something came on the inside and changed me from the inside out. And if you've never had that assurance, if you've never had that change, Chances are you're not right with God. You say, preacher, that's, that's harsh and that's mean. No, I'm telling you that tonight because I would hate for you to think that heaven's going to be your home and think that you're a good person and think everything's okay and still die and go to hell. Why don't you make sure tonight that you know I'm not fake. I've been fake long enough at school. I've been fake long enough at church. I've been fake long enough. I want Jesus. I want Jesus to work on me tonight. I want Jesus to work on me. And you'll find that even in the hard times, running in the hard times, when nobody else is there, when nobody knows what you're going through, when Jesus begins to get down with you, he begins to do what gives life to that tree. He's wanting to transition it. And so sometimes when nobody else is around, Jesus will pull up next to you. And he'll just start pouring some water on you. He'll just start watering you a little bit. Hey, hey, let me tell you how I know that I know that I know that I'm right with God. It's because, hey, just a few minutes ago, Jesus pulled up beside me over there in that stairwell. And he just started pouring a little water on me. Aren't you glad that when nothing else will work, when nothing else will do, God will start pouring in. Heads bowed, eyes closed all over this house. Nobody looking, nobody looking. I appreciate God tonight. Nobody looking tonight. This is the most serious time we've had all day. Listen to me tonight. Some are going back to your seats and I ask you, I ask you as soon as you get back to your seats, heads bowed, eyes closed. We're going to be real tonight. We're going to be really, really real. We're going to be really genuine, really authentic. This ain't about nobody else. Get that out of your mind. Right now, if you're in this room and you say, Preacher, I've played the part. I know the scriptures. I know church. I know how to do it. I, I know all these things, but in my heart, I'm not sure. I don't know that I'm saved. I don't know. If that's you tonight, nobody's looking, just me and God. If that's you, would you slip your hand up, please? Would you just slip it up? One. Hey, man, would there be somebody else? Come on. Somebody else across the room. Two, three, four, five, six. Somebody else tonight. Seven, eight, nine, ten in the back. Eleven, twelve. Somebody else tonight. Come on. Come on, somebody. Hey, twelve of you. Twelve of you have raised your hand and you're not sure. Listen. If you're not sure, I want you to look at me, you and only you, you and only you. I want to tell you something tonight. I want to tell you that Jesus Christ loves you right where you are, that he died for you, that he shed his blood for you. And if you'd accept him, if you would ask him, if you would make sure, if you would say, Jesus, please come into my heart, that at that moment, your life becomes real. Your life becomes relevant. You begin to do something for God at that moment. You say, but preacher, I'm scared. I know, I know I was too. But in just a few moments, people are, we're going to be flooding these altars. Christians in this room are going to flood these altars and pray for people to get right and for you to have the courage. We're going to do that for you tonight. We're going to flood this place. We're going to ask God to give you the courage. I want men of God, every men of God, if you could stand around these altars. Men of God, if you can come and get around these altars and stand. Listen to me as they're moving, as they're moving. Listen, don't lose me right now. God has brought you here tonight. And this may be the year that God changes everything in your life. This may be the day. What if this was the day that Jesus came back and cut you down? 
This is what I want you to do. Men of God are praying, and then these men are, are, are waiting. Listen, we're going to stand our feet all over the house, all over the house tonight. Young teenager, maybe you've got called up in some things that's making you look kind of fake. Maybe you've got caught up in some things that's taken you away from God. Maybe your relationships behind closed doors are not what they should be. Maybe your life, your, your social media, everything you do is not what it should be in the eyes of God. This is what I want us to do tonight. I want Luke to sing. And as soon as the first words come out of his mouth... As soon as they come out of his mouth, I want us moving. I want us moving. And then listen, if you need to be saved, I want you to come get one of these preachers. All you got to do, you ain't got to say a word. Just tap them on the shoulder. And they'll show you with the Bible how you can know that you know that you know that you're safe. Now's your time not to be scared. We're not worried about nothing else. We're getting things right with God. Go ahead, Luke. As soon as he sings, we're moving. Right now. Right now. Let's go. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I felt so alone. I need some men of God right around here. In that lonely hour. Yes, those precious Come on, if you need to be saved, hours, tell somebody, tap Jesus somebody, let, let us show you. That I was his own. Hey, if you're on the and altar, through, listen, if you're on the altar tonight and you need to be saved, you need somebody to pray with you, just slip your hand up right where you are I've and we'll have somebody to get to you. Jesus. Don't be ashamed. This is your year. This is your day. God. This is what God wants for your and life. Come on. Hey, if you raised your hand earlier, just raise it right where you are. Men of God, people of God, be watching. Look, come on. Eleven people. Eleven people raised their hands. Not sure. Raise them up now. It's not embarrassing. Don't worry about it. And I've seen so many faces. But there have been times I felt so all alone. Listen. But in that lonely hour, yes, those precious lonely hours, Jesus let me know that I was His own. And through it all, through it all, if you need to be saved, just raise your hand. I've learned to trust in Jesus. Would you get with them right there coming in? I've learned to trust in God. I've learned to depend upon His word. Come on. Hey, listen. I'm not fake anymore. I'm not going to be like this tree. I'm going to be used for the Master's use. Do you understand that God wants to use you tonight? Young man, I believe there's men in this room. Young men, I believe there's young men right now that God is calling. That God is calling right now. I believe there's young ladies that God's putting a call on their life. Hey, if you're over here and you need to be saved, just raise your hand. If you need to be sure, if you need somebody to pray with you, and you want to, you you're tired of being fake. You're tired of playing the games and singing the songs and quoting the scriptures. That you want something real in your life. You want God to do something real. Wherever you are, just raise your hand. I need somebody right here. So I thank God for the mountains. And I thank Him for the valleys. And I thank Him for the storms He's brought me through. Let God pour some water on it. Because if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that He could solve it. I wouldn't know what faith in God can do. Hey, if you need somebody to pray with you, just come down, put your hand up. Through it all. Just put your hand up wherever you are. We're coming. Through it all. Brother Wesley, trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all. 
through it all I've learned to depend upon His work. Hey, hey listen You know what the cool thing about all this is? Is there's no better place in this world that you could be tonight There's no better place than in the presence of of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God is in this place tonight. Your healer, your helper, your God, the chain breaker, your God is in this place tonight. We say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abraham. That's the greatest Pray sound in the world. For eh? the day God would give Say, Brandon. Yes. We got some more all over. Hey, listen. Listen, if you've given your heart to Jesus tonight, just start, just come up here. Just hurry. Come on, don't be ashamed. Come on. If you give your heart to God tonight, if you get, if you this ask is, Jesus, come on. This is Nolan. Nolan, tell him what happened. I got saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Roll tide, Nolan. Here you go. If you got saved tonight, if you gave your heart to Jesus, come on. Madison. This is Madison. Madison, what did the Lord do for you? I got saved. It don't matter your age You ain't got to be a teenager If you gave it all to Jesus If you said I'm tired of being fake And you made that profession of faith tonight Come on Don't be ashamed I got saved I got saved. <laughs> hey, matter of fact, if you got saved, don't leave. Just stand up here on this stage. If you got saved tonight. Come on. If you got saved tonight, come, on come up back. here and stand. Come on. I was living a fake life, but now I'm saved. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't run off. All you, all you kids that got saved tonight, come stand up here. Come on. saved in 2014, but tonight I know for sure that I did. (laughs) (laughs) I got saved. I'm Julia Rylander, and I surrendered my heart to God. <laughs> my name's Trey Johnson. I got saved. <laughs> my name is in the book of life. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. above. And I know, I know, my name is there. Oh, I know, I know, my name is written there. Well, my name once stood with sin. 
Listen, there's a, there's a preacher at home, in his home right now, Dr. Todd Black, watching on live. And somebody has reached out to him on live Facebook and he's led them to the Lord on Facebook that's in this room tonight. Whoever you are, listen to me. That's something to be proud of tonight. That's something to let, hey, let God know you're thankful. Amen. Thank God for what he's doing tonight. Go ahead and sing again tonight. Hey, don't be ashamed if you've been saved tonight. Just come on. Come on, let, let the people know. Let God know. Hey, you're thankful for what he did in your life tonight. Maybe that was you on Facebook. Come on. So, I was praying while Mrs. Barry was singing, and I was trying to think of every little thing I could think of. And one of them was for the Lord to search my heart and find bad motives and sins that I didn't know were there. And the Lord answered my prayer through this sermon tonight before I even knew I was going to pray it. Yes. The Lord is yes. so good. <laughs> Amen. That's awesome. That's a spirit. How about it for these? Receive the Lord. Give them a round of applause. over here, work over there, everywhere. Hey, Bethel, why don't you come on up here and get ready to, to sing, and while they're getting ready, Rick, I want you to come. Come on, Rick. Right here, Big Rick. While they're getting ready to sing, you give a brief testimony. He said, I got something on my heart. If God leads, you let me get it. I said, come on right now. Amen. Boy, God is moving. Praise His name. God's led me to I, I was at a youth retreat in October 1973 and I found Christ and gave my gave my heart to Jesus and I know for a fact I was saved on that day but because I entered life with only two pieces of armor from God two scriptures that I had in my heart which was Philippians 413, I can do all things through Christ. It strengthens me. And I entered life with knowing that any of us that ask God for wisdom, he freely gives us wisdom without finding fault. All we have to do is ask him. So I took on the world. I went to church every day and came home and put my Bible on the stand and didn't read the word of God. I didn't armor myself with God. And God blessed me and, and Many things he did because I took on life knowing that I could do all things through Christ and knowing that if I asked for wisdom, he'd give it to me. And he freely did, but I was lacking the word of God. And when Satan attacked me, I wasn't prepared. I, I, I wasn't ready for the battles because he's such a great deceiver. And um, you know, I had three football scholarships, and my father and I had a little dispute, and he said I ought to join the 
Marines that make a man out of me. He was a paratrooper. My uncle was a colonel in the Army, so I thought I was smarter than him, and I joined the Navy. He said, that's okay. They'll still make a man out of you. But I battled my whole life because I only had two pieces of armor. And um, then I met my wife, and the first thing we asked each other was, do you know Jesus? And we only knew each other 14 days, and we got married, and this year we're celebrating 34, and that's because God was in our marriage the whole time, from the beginning to the end to, till we go home together. But <laughs> I, was still, I was still missing my armor. Every time I went to battle, all I had was a little shin guard and some safety glasses. And on my 44th, when I was 44 years old, my daughter and my wife asked me what I wanted for Father's Day. And I says, I want, I, I, I'm such a weak reader. And all these years I failed to read the Word of God. I said, I, I would like to have the Bible on CDs. I drove 450 miles a day because I asked God for wisdom in my job. I was a general superintendent for an extremely large construction company. But I didn't do it. God did it because he gave me wisdom because I asked him. So I was in that car, and I started listening to the Word of God and at 44 years old. And I was saved when I was 12. All you young people, man, every day, if you just read two verses, yeah. I challenge you to read Proverbs. It will teach you everything you need to know about life, and it's going to give you a desire to dig in that book. And when you dig in that book, God's going to give you so much wisdom that you're going to be able to handle the battles that I failed. Yeah. And it got to where I questioned, I questioned my fact that did I know Jesus? And I was, as I was doing that, then we all got, y'all all got these phones now. Let me tell you something about these phones. The best app you'll ever have is the King James Version Bible. Okay, because I was such a poor reader, the best app I ever got was the King James Version Bible that read to me while I read it. And it, and it wasn't easy. God kept saying, wait a minute, Rick. I mean, not God. The devil got in the way. The devil kept saying, wait a minute, Rick. Don't listen to that. You're, you're my favorite Christian. Nobody knows you're a Christian. So after I was reading the word and, and, and getting in God's word, I ran to the store and I bought this cross. And I put this cross around my neck in my bathroom, looking in the mirror. And I told God, I said, God, for 30 years, nobody's known I was a Christian. And I said, I want to put this around my neck so every morning I know I'm a Christian and I, would, I want you to help me to stop cussing. I cuss like a sailor. In two days, God took all those vocabulary out of, away from me. I never cussed. I didn't do it. God did it. And, and just to leave you young people with one last thing, we all leave an impression on everybody, no matter what you do, good or bad. And when I was in the military, I was off the coast of North Korea. I was on the USS Midway, CV-41, and we were going through a typhoon. And me and Red, we worked together every day for two years. Anybody that's, that's been in the military here that's a serviceman knows that you grow a bond with somebody in the military that you work with every day. There's a bond you'll never forget. But that night, <laughs> Red and I were running around because you can't put every plane in the lower deck. And, the, and we had to run around, and every time a chain snapped on the planes, we had to put a new chain on there. And our buddy Scooter wanted to get up on the flight deck. You're not supposed to let people on the flight deck. But we let him up there when our shift was over because it's not every day that an aircraft carrier with a flight deck 75 feet from the water goes into the water, and the water comes up over the ship. And we took him up to the horns of the ship, and we were sitting there, and the, when the white water would come up, it was tremendous. And we were saying, let's go. And Scooter said, one more wave. And when the one more wave came up, Red was gone off the coast of North Korea in the middle of the night with a hurricane, now a typhoon over there. And I looked at Scooter, and I said, Scooter, you got you to gotta get to the fly hole and get out of here. You're not supposed to be here. And I ran back and hollered, man, overboard. Well, I'm here to tell you that 45 minutes later, I don't know how, but a destroyer found Red. And he was, he was brought back on the boat, and I got to see him before they took him away. Because in the Navy, if you ever fall overboard, you don't ever have to get back on the ship again. And they transferred him to Orlando. And uh, six months to the day, he was walking across the street. 
dozen roses in his hand to give to his new girlfriend. He was going to ask him to marry her. And an old lady ran a red light and killed him. But what bothers me more than ever is we had that bond for two years. And that was at a time in my life when I was choked out with the thorns of life. And the devil had me tricked. And I, and I wasn't sharing the gospel like we're supposed to do. Because ever since I was 45, I've learned that we're supposed to be the city on the hill. We don't have to be a great preacher. But everybody we meet, we need to tell them about Jesus. And I have, I have, I have such, such a nightmare because the Bible tells us that Jesus is going to wipe away every tear. And I know he will. I can't, I can't wait to get there and see the crystal sea. But before he wipes away that tear, I have this dream because we all have to be accountable for every word that we spoke. And I know that when I stand before God, because I have Jesus in my heart, I have the best lawyer in the world. Jesus Christ is going to stand up for me and say, Jesus, Father, he, he believed in me. But when Red died, I didn't know if he was a Christian. But what I do know is I spent two years of my life with him with a very special bond working on the flight deck every single day. My fear is that when he stands before the judge... He's going to turn around, he's going to look at me, and he's going to say, Rick, why didn't you tell me about Jesus? So everybody y'all see, no matter who it is, just take a minute to praise God and tell them about Jesus because you don't want to have that on your mind. Read your Bible, young people. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you what. This bunch come all the way from Sparta, Tennessee, isn't that right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you listen to them sing tonight.
gracious. We have Wesley Campbell come sing now. We're going to have him sing, He Grew the Tree. He knew it would be used to make the old rugged cross. Uh, my, what a night. And you know what, really? It's just 9 o'clock. Most of the time, I mean, God really did a work. I felt him here in a mighty way, and I'm so thankful for that. Uh, before we dismiss you tonight, um, I want to say thank you for all those that labored for the food. Let's give them an applause. Huh? Thank you. Thank you very much. And everything that we tell people here and everywhere, and all the, also all the adults that are driving buses, staying with kids, anything, cleaning up, um, we do it for the glory of God, not for the glory of self, but that God may get the glory. And if we always do that, everything works out great. Um, tomorrow morning, we're going to be serving breakfast here. And I'm talking homemade cat head biscuit Amen. breakfast. I said, there's some crowd there from Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, somewhere that knew what I was talking about. That's the Alabama boy right there. Homemade cat head biscuits and gravy in the morning. Mountain style. I'd make a Presbyterian kick the back out of his robe. <laughs> it's good. It's going to be good, but we only need one thing. We need to know how many is going to be here to eat breakfast at 830. 350 what? People. How many of you are going to show up for the breakfast? Can I see your hand? Oh. How about I have an one, one, two, three, one? <laughs> you got to keep them up. I, I, I don't, can y'all count that quick? Count sections? Count a section? You count section one, two, three, and four. Hey, the biscuit. <laughs> Lord, they quit preaching and gone to meddling up here. I, would, I, I, I hope LB takes nursing home for me tomorrow. I'd like to eat some of that. I don't know if I'd be able to preach after eating that, but you got a pretty good guesstimation there, brother? 135 out of 220. I only want breakfast, okay? Now, what we don't want, if you didn't raise your hands to show up and say, well, I'm hungry. Because you'll have to wait till 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock when Joplin preaches to feed you, Okay? So we're going to be having breakfast here at 8.30. We invite you to be here, be a part of that at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock every year, in case you haven't been here, our 10 o'clock hour and our 11 o'clock hour, we'll have back-to-back -back preaching services, have a little, a little break in the middle. Um, Brother Joplin Emerson from Derby, Kansas, good friend of mine. Did you bring your books with you, brother? Oh, brother. Can you get them on, can you get them on your iPad? Okay, um, for all pastors that are here, you, you need to get his book. And I've, my, my, War Within? Yeah. Hey, if you will have pastors that online, get you their info, we will mail out a free copy of every pastor Okay. Every pastor that would like a copy of this book, The War Within, written by our friend Joplin Emerson, who will stand on this stage in the morning at 10 a.m. and preach. If you'll get us your information, and the best way to do that is just email me your name. I'm Pastor So-and-so, and that way I will forward that to him. He will mail that. You need your address. The book that he wrote, The War Within, was written out of a situation that I was going through, and he thought he would help me. He just thought, I'm going to help you through this. And, buddy, you don't know what that meant to me during that time. And he began to write lessons for me that turned into a book. And so my problem became his book. And I, 
<laughs> My problem became his prize, okay? Um, and we're thankful that every pastor needs, every pastor needs to read that book. It will help you because all pastors have problems. All pastors have people that will give them problems. Why? Because they're people. And all pastors can be problems. We can all be a problem sometimes. Ask the lady sitting next to you. And so what we do, through that book, it will help you, and I promise you about that. Anything else, Brother Lucas? I got drinks over here tonight. Or anything. Yeah, we got snacks. Okay, got snacks prepared for you in the Family Life Center. Also, folks have tables set up back there in the back. Please go by those tables. And, and uh, I know Brother Jacob has CDs uh, back there, preaching discs, DVDs, all that kind of stuff. And also Joplin has a table set up back there for missions. Uh, does anyone else have a table set up back there? Thank you. I figured Callie would be saying, us, Daddy. The Rumfelt family's got a table back there. And tomorrow we will sing Chain Breaker, I promise you, at some point in, in the service. I, I, honest to Pete, I'm telling you, my kids, I think they sing it better than the guy that, that first did it. And... Um, and I'm just bragging. I'm bragging on my kids. That's what I'm doing. That's what you're supposed to do as a parent. But I mean it. I mean it. Uh, we have that CD available. And my little girl's making her way back there right now to help you in case you want one. Okay? All right, folks. Let's stand to our feet. How many of you with your right hand that you will raise it and say, I promise to pray for the service in the morning? Okay, good. Now keep it up. Now for all you kids, I promise that I'll go to bed before midnight. <laughs> all the adults. Hey, listen, you get some rest tonight and you'll have all day to play tomorrow after service. Make sure you get, hey, hey, and guys, remember, if you don't go to sleep, don't be loud. You know who the loudest cabin is up there on that hill? Hayesville. I mean, loud. I mean, just loud, rowdy rednecks. <laughs> Hillbillies. Mountain folk. Well, so, hey, some of their cousins over there are on that moonshiner show that's staying in that cabin. We better pray that they don't come over there, amen? Hey, let's get our hands in there. Let's exercise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. See you in the morning. God bless you. Good night. Be safe.